Tonight is July the 2nd, 2018, and uh, I'm going to post something here tonight, pretty short, but, uh, and there'll have to be a couple of follow-up videos to this as I uh, completely refine it and get it to where I'm actually making contacts on it, but this is an 833 big triode amplifier that I've built for 20 meters. It's got all the bands on it, but I'm only interested in operating it on 20 meters. That's the only one I've tested it on so far. I made it with uh, 866 rectifiers down here in a bridge, uh, excuse me, in a voltage doubler configuration. I made them with the uh, 866s just because they're beautiful. I'm going to turn the high voltage on to it right now. It's still a little bit in test mode, but it is working and it's working quite well. I'm very pleased with it. I do not see anywhere where anybody has used an 833 on 20 meters and posted anything on it. I'm sure somebody's done it before. Uh, there are some articles out there where um, people have used the 833, but they usually use it on 160, 80, or 40 meters, and uh, nobody seems to have tackled it up on 20 meters. So let's turn high voltage on. I'm still doing quite a bit of it manual right now. But there you go. If you like uh, beautiful rectifiers, those uh, mercury vapor guys down there, 866A, and you can start seeing some color in the plate of the uh, 833. I'm using a B&W 852 tank coil, and right up there at the top, I can't put my finger in there. Right there, there's a, a vacuum capacitor. Here's the tuning, uh, the band switch, the loading. Uh, plate current and grid current. As you can see, the plate current's very low. It's actually proper. It's about 40 milliamps at uh, 30, about 3,800 volts, 3,800 volts. I don't have this lit yet. This does light up. So that's one more thing I've got to do. You can see there in the in inside it, I think, uh, the two filament transformers. Uh, one of them is right there. Those are right there, and then there's the power supply. Now you can see the red in the plate. This uh, camera makes it look a little uh, more purple than it is. It's actually a very dull orange, and uh, it's not very bright. Let's look around at the back. This thing is on, so I got to make sure I keep my fingers completely out of it. There's the uh, tank circuit. There is the uh, vacuum capacitor up there. Right up right up here and then the loading is uh, loading capacitor is a conventional air air capacitor right here and I got a couple of patterns on it this is uh, the plate tank uh, uh, choke right there is out of an old World War II ART 13 the power supply is down here darn I need I need some light down here let's uh, let's get some light I'm using an ICOM right here to drive it Ran at 14.250 megahertz. That's what we'll be testing it at. Yeah, let's get the light on down there. Yeah, that makes it a little bit better, doesn't it? See, there's the filament transformer right there. This fellow. Uh, this resistor that's illuminated is the uh, bleeder resistor for the bias supply. The bias supply transformer is this guy right here. And the bias adjustment is this right here. This is an SCR type of uh, voltage adjustment that goes in one line of the primary. There's a bridge and a uh, large capacitor there and then the, to supply the grid, the bias voltage. Uh, there's 12 capacitors over there, six in each side for the uh, voltage divider. They're all uh, 470 uh, microfarad, 450 volt. There's a big transformer back there. That's a 1800 volt um, 600 milliamp I'm using it in a voltage doubler here's a uh, the plate choke funny thing about this choke is uh, it's actually only it, it's part of it, it came out of the same thing but they it apparently was a very it was a lower voltage meant to be like seven or eight hundred volts and it has a working voltage of 600 and uh, one of the tricks that I learned decades ago is when you have a choke and you need to run it at a lot higher voltage than it's rated at, uh, what you do is you uh, float it. See how I've got it sitting on that little particle board down there? 
this choke right here is, is not attached uh, electrically to ground. So it floats and I got like I said, I gotta remember this thing is actually on a couple of meters. There's the uh, filament transformers back in there for the A66s. Uh, let's make this kind of short and sweet, but uh, I'm really proud of this. Uh, I haven't been building as much lately, and this one has been in the works for quite some time. I had a slight injury on a trip up to um, Denver not too long ago. It slowed me down and put me in uh, physical therapy for a while, but I'm doing great. I'm, I'm not about to kick the bucket or anything like that. Okay, let's put this thing in uh, CW mode. Hope the camera is uh, adjusting quickly, and then we'll just turn the uh, uh, we'll just turn it on right here, and there we go. There's our output right there. 750 watts, steady as she goes, and our input. If you do the numbers here. Uh, that's uh, 3150 volts at 380 milliamps, 3150 at uh, 0.38. I'll show you what its efficiency is. It's quite good. Uh, 3150, 0.38. That's 1197 watts input, and we got 750 output. We switch that around and that and it's a 63% efficient that is perfectly good and acceptable as you can see the output is right here there it is I know that's probably overwhelming the camera and if we take it out of uh, if we put it in a single sideband and turn that off so that we can actually speak into it we'll modulate it you can see I've got some noise picked up. That's just some noise being picked up from wherever. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. It's a WA4QGA in El Paso testing on a dummy load. You can see right there that it that it never it never flat tops. It's not clipping. So I could probably actually drive it a little bit harder. I have found out that you actually do want to drive it up. Oh, I would say to five or five to ten percent distortion actually otherwise if you're talking like this and you've always got your you've already got your gain turned down really low people can't hear you so you you, you need the thing well it's it's crazy oscilloscope it's always trying to save it CRT anyway uh, you you actually want to modulate the thing pretty hard so anyway that's about that's about all I can, I've got to show you right now there's what it looks like on the meter. Of course, that's not going to show peaks. And uh, if we look at uh, uh, the, the plate meter, plate meter modulating, uh, it, there's nothing impressive about that. There's the grid current right there. And of course, you can see the uh, 866 rectifier is modulating with my voice. I'm speaking to the microphone as I'm making this video. And uh, hello. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. It's WA four QGA. You can see the uh, you, you can see my voice modulating the the plate of the eight thirty three. So there you go. I'll go ahead and post this. And when I uh, I've got to install a relay, I've got to install a TR relay, a transfer and receive relay, so that the high voltage is keyed up with the um, uh, you know by the exciter. Right now, see I've got. Uh, I've got a big, really impressive ceramic switch right there that, that switches the high voltage. And uh, this is the input because there's, there's three taps on the input. There's my uh, high voltage being modulated by my voice. So it seems to be fairly steady. I am driving it uh, on, a, on a dedicated circuit with a uh, big piece of number 10 uh, extension cord right out from under my... Uh, my uh, meter <laughs> outside so I installed that some time ago so that when I want to run these high power projects but anyway there you go I hope uh, you guys that uh, enjoy amateur radio will uh, uh, enjoy this a little bit over the 833 running at 20 meters I hope in the next couple of weeks to have this thing on the air 
I'm working on it kind of slow. Oh, here's kind of an interesting way I, I, I found to feed the grid. Um, there's where the wire comes from underneath, and it comes up, and as you can see, the, that post on the right is the grid, the one on the left is the plate, where the high voltage is. And uh, <clears throat> I was driving with just a piece of RG58 going up to it. I'll, I'll quit modulating that thing and turn this thing down. Uh, turn, the, turn the thing off. Let's turn the high voltage off. Just to make sure in case I get in there I don't get killed. Um, but I had a piece of RG58 coming through. I had it, uh, the shield grounded on the other side underneath and it was just coming up. And uh, it seemed like I had some some hard to explain instabilities in it. I thought, well, I'm feeding the grid with a 50 ohm line. What if I feed it with something a little bit more high impedance, which this would be. This would be a few hundred ohms. It's got a very small little uh, uh, choke in it. And of course, I got the standard plate choke over here. So uh, there you go. So I hope you guys enjoy this and uh, I'll make another video and here in a week or two showing how this thing actually uh, works. Thanks for watching.